Coach Deanna with another episode of the Winning Element Podcast, The Athlete's Journey. Today, we are on the journey with Jamie Lee Rattray. Jamie is a professional hockey player for the Canadian Hockey League, and in her last season, her team not only took home the Clarkson Cup, but she was also voted the MVP of the Canadian Women's Hockey League. In this episode, we talk about Jamie's athlete journey and her history of winning. We also talk about how she is mentally and physically preparing to get back on the Canadian national team to compete in the next Olympics. Jamie provides a vulnerable look into the reality that female athletes don't make enough money to support themselves, let alone be provided health care and appropriate resources. Each generation has tried to pave the way for the next, and that is exactly what Jamie is doing today. Our conversation also centers around the importance of finding balance and trying new things and just really living and being in the moment. This podcast is brought to you by The Winning Element, a mental and physical performance platform for athletes. Our flagship product has been getting attention from Olympians, colleges, and high school programs across the world. We are in Australia, Mexico, Japan, Canada, and even Costa Rica. The flagship product is The Winning Element Gold Edition, which is my best-selling book, The Winning Element, An Athlete's Guide to Maximizing Mental and Physical Performance, and the 365-Day Dynamic Planner. Now, this planner book combo is a powerful resources for athletes who really want to level up, get recruited, and play at a higher level. The Winning Element Gold Edition is designed by athletes for athletes. And winning and progress are really about working smarter. And it's about applying small strategies that make a big difference. And if you're not doing some of these strategies, you're not going to be getting the results that you deserve. Now, the winning element has cracked the code for developing athletes and sharing game-changing mental and physical performance strategies that actually work. Most of these strategies are free and don't require extra time or money. It just takes diligence and consistency. The athlete journey is difficult, but with the right roadmap and mentor, it becomes a lot easier and more exciting because you're going to actually see and feel results. This comprehensive athlete development program is perfect for individual athletes and teams. Listeners and fans of this podcast will receive 10% off, free shipping, online resources, and bonuses. Visit www.bethewinningelement.com slash gold edition. This podcast is also brought to you by Whoop. Whoop is my favorite wearable, and it's the choice of professional athletes and serious fitness enthusiasts. If you're serious about performance, training, and leveling up your life, you got to get yourself a Whoop. Whoop provides data on heart rate, sleep, strain, and heart rate variability and more. And the data that I'm getting from Whoop helps me to plan my workouts, my recovery days, and helps me make smarter choices that better serve my mind and body. And if you're constantly overtraining, you know, you're going to risk injury, adrenal fatigue, and ultimately decrease performance. And that's something that nobody wants. You know, I've been utilizing my Whoop for about two and a half, three years, and it's been instrumental in helping me to understand my body and how to get the most out of my training. You know, Whoop is a little bit different than other wearables because it's subscription based, meaning you pay every month instead of all at once. And they just came out with the 3.0. So you can actually get one free month of Whoop by going to www.bethewinningelement.com slash Whoop. As always, you can access show notes, the special offer for the gold edition, and our product highlight for this episode at www.bethewinningelement.com slash podcast 018. I hope you enjoy this episode with Jamie. Let's go. Please welcome to the winning element, professional hockey player, Jamie Lee Retray. Jamie, good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? How's, uh, How's it going on the west side? Ah, it's good. It's super sunny. It's already, uh, so it's 8.30 out here and it's already like 85 degrees. Oh man, you you guys have it pretty good. It's not too bad today. I'll take, I'll take the weather today, but our uh, spring has been uh, pretty tough out here in Toronto. So 
So I'll take these days when I can get them. I know. Oh my god! I'd be the, I'd be the type of hockey player if I was in the NHL to go to the rink and flip flops and come out and flip flops. That's for sure. So I could play in Southern California, no problem. Oh my god, you're crazy. That's, that's ridiculous. Have you um like obviously over your lifetime have you adapted to the cold all the time? Like you just walk in and you're like, oh yeah, like I how how cold is it in a in a facility is it normally um it's it depends right like it depends on the rinks you go to and stuff like that but I mean I grew up in Ottawa where it's a little colder than than here in Toronto so sometimes now when I go back home like at Christmas time it it kind of shocks me still and I kind of feel like I I should be better with it but because as a kid you used to stay out there for hours right when it was minus 40 but yeah um, a lot of the rinks (laughs) (laughs) I had to play that back in my head I was like oh I know I know just 40 that's celsius that's my like that's celsius so no thank yeah. you i mean yeah i know spoiled i'm so spoiled here and i always have been i went to college in south texas so i like my body loves the sauna feeling like i'm like yeah it's cool it's 115 that's fine oh it's 100 that's cool i'll go for a run no big deal i'll train for triathlons and 100 degrees no big deal but it's like the second you get me in uh and i'm trying to get better because i know that it's good for adaptation i know like i i continue to try to shock my system and get better at it but still 60 degrees is cold 60 degrees is cold for me (laughs) yeah like you guys like the dry heat and it's like here it's humid in the summer so (laughs) we're opposites right now but that's uh, that's funny I don't know if I could be breathing the Texas heat I don't know if I could train out there that's for sure oh my god it was when I was there this was like years ago when I was there it was um it was fun and it was challenging. Like I, like it was almost something that it was like, you know, like feather in your cap, like, Oh yeah, it's 115. I'm trained. You know, I'd be out there yeah. like at noon and people would be like, um, they'd see me cause I would run around. Um, when I was training for triathlons, I would run outside. So I'd like run around the university and the surrounding neighborhoods and, <laughs> and people would see me later in the day. And then they'd be like, um, so I honked at you and I obviously didn't hear them cause I was like jamming out. But yeah. they're like, yeah, I honked at you. Um, and I almost followed you for a while because it was really hot and I was a little concerned for your safety. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that, that'd be tough. I, I always feel like if I train outside, I'd like burning more calories because I'm sweating more if it's if it's the summertime. I don't know. Maybe that's just mine. I can eat, eat a bigger meal after. That's just always my mindset. I don't know if any other athletes have that. But <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. Uh, you know, <laughs> if that if that belief system works, Keep it, keep it going. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, anything you can use, I guess. Oh my gosh. Well, how's your morning been so far? What have you been up to? Uh, pretty good. I got up pretty early this morning to train and I've got a good training group here in Toronto. So we had, uh, we had a good, uh, cycling class this morning, power cycling. Uh, the class uh, is run by a guy named Joseph who he, uh, he does triathlons. So he's not easy. He's not an easy guy to, his class <laughs> I've done it a million times now. And I feel like it should get easier, but it never it does. Doesn't. So it doesn't. He keeps it fresh, which is, I think, good as an athlete. You feel challenged, I think, every time you go in there. And then after that, we had a, a good upper body lift today. It was the second day of the week. So i um, feeling pretty good about that. It's nice to get – I'm a big morning person, so once I get my workout done, I can enjoy my day a little bit better and come home and have a big breakfast and, and start my day from there, I think. So uh, usually I don't get up quite that early, but today to Tuesdays are usually an early one for me. <sighs> Very, very nice. I'm hoping to get mine in a little bit later. I've got, I've got your podcast. I've got a couple more. So I'm hoping, and you know, it's always one of those, like I always make time, but there are some days that it's just everything is like that time frames are so condensed and crushed together. So I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that I'll be able to get a really good lift in later. But if I don't, then I'll do some stretching before bed and I'll just chalk it up to a recovery day. There you go. That's always the best. Oh, today will just be a recovery day. I couldn't get <laughs> none up yeah. hours in the day. Today's a, today's a self-care day, you know, Absolutely. and I'll, I'm sure I'll, I'll burn enough in the, um, so I have a whoop real fun fact. So I like, it's, it's always taking data. It's always going. And a lot of times, so I like like digging in and looking at or blending um, my, uh, my perception with like objective data. Right. So it's like, yeah. this is, this is how I feel versus, um, this is what this is telling me. Right. And like being able to blend those together and being able to, uh, look at like training and recovery, um, and everything. And, um, one of the things that I like doing is 
after I do a podcast or actually actually after I do a speaking engagement, you can see um, the fluctuations in my heart rate. Uh-huh. And oh yeah, it's super interesting. And I apparently my my heart is working its butt off. Like it's like <laughs> pa 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 pa, and it's just like it looks like I've been doing a power cycling class um, cardiovascularly. And of course, like that's, that's not, um, uh, muscle stress. That's just like straight up body stress, like, yeah. body stress uh, or body strain. Um, uh, but it's always really interesting when I look at it, uh, and I'm like, how, how is this possible? Because I don't, a lot of times I don't feel like I'm straining myself or I don't feel like I'm, um, like, I don't feel like I'm in that, like that stress, like the, Oh my God, I don't feel like yeah. I'm there, but the data shows like, girl, you're working, you're working really, <laughs> really hard. <laughs> yeah. I find too, like when I'm like, I have a very low heart rate as well, like my, with my training and stuff. So sometimes I'll have a lift and I'll, I'll be wearing my heart rate monitor and I won't see a lot of fluctuation. So sometimes at the end of the day, I don't feel like I've got a ton done. So, um, I think on days like today, when I kind of get in the bike room and, and do stuff like that, and I see the actual different colors and the different, uh, um, high, high heart rates you feel a little bit better about it because my heart rate is so low that that sometimes uh, even if I'm lifting super heavy and stuff it doesn't get super high so that's kind of I think you're right as an athlete it's nice to see kind of what what goes on sometimes and, and how it <laughs> relates to how you're feeling and it's funny sometimes I think there's some mornings I wake up I have no sleep or I feel like I get no sleep and anything and sometimes those are my best lifts and sometimes when I have 10 hours sleeps they're not you know it's kind of funny how that works out uh, that way so yeah I'm right there with you I um So the, my thing gives me a recovery score and sometimes depending on how my body's feeling or my nervous system is, you know, is my nervous system recovered enough to handle the strain of like a high intensity, you know, um, workout session, or should this be long, you know, should this be a longer spin or should this be a slower, uh, swim or should I, you know, um, should I change up what I'm doing? And it is really interesting when you um, when you start to incorporate the data, right? Because you look at the data and you're like, oh, well, maybe I'll back it off. But yet sometimes those are the best days. Those are yeah, the absolutely. best days. So it's almost like that balance of, well, the data is cool and the data is fun. Um, but there's also the go, go, get out there and get it. <laughs> you just got to yeah, yeah, go. Like, how do I feel today, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah. let's go, right? Like we've been doing that. Um, I think you said you're 26, I'm 32. And, you know, when you when you train at an elite level, um, when you're intimately connected with your mind and your body, and, you know, this is something that you've been doing for your entire life. Um, yeah. And granted, granted, we get better at this, right? Or we hope we get better at this. Um, but you think that we have like some type of um, like internal guidance system that's like, yeah, girl, go get it. Or, uh, today is not the day yeah Yeah, and I think that's too something that incorporates kind of how I've evolved as an athlete like through college I think it was also regimented that uh, you kind of your mind kind of not not robotic but sometimes you're like oh you had to do it no matter what and then I think in our sport as a as a hockey players and in our leagues and stuff and once you get into the professional ranks you kind of have to be your own coach or and you got to be your own coach you got to be your own nutritionist you got to kind of do it all and yeah um you kind of got to be able to gauge where you're where you're at and how, how what works for you and I know I've been six years out of college and six years in professional hockey and um and international play that you figure out what works for you and what doesn't and um it does take a long time to get there sometimes <laughs> <laughs> I think I think uh I think though it's all part of the process I think that's what makes it fun I think the younger girls that I get to play with on different teams, I try to share that with them because it's okay not sometimes um, to have a day off or sometimes it's okay if you want to go two or three times and you're feeling, you know, it's, it's about finding the right balance. I think that's the big key. So that's interesting. Do you find that uh, the younger players that, uh, that you're mentoring and around, do you find them to be pretty open-minded to the wisdom that you've gained or um, are they the, the I'm going to figure it out for myself and you're like all right <laughs> I think it depends on who you get right like I'm like like you said you were a coach I coach a lot of girls a lot of different ages from I don't know from 10 right up to um, university age and I think 
Um, the biggest thing now we see a lot in sport is kind of, I don't know if it's parents or the way sports evolved in terms of they just <laughs> want to go, go, go all the time and, and not have a lot of balance. And I think, yeah. I mean, I look at when I was in high school, like I, I only played just hockey and just like as like as competitively as I did. But I also had balance in the summer times where I was able to go up to my cottage and do different sports up there and um, do different things with my friends. Whereas I think kids now, they're not they're not as well rounded. I don't know whether that's, um, you know, whether it's uh, the way the game is evolving or sports in general, but um, I'd like to see, I think there's a lot of kids out there that are very open to it. And I try to remind them that it's okay to have a break and okay to be, if sometimes you get to the rink and, and, and sometimes it's a day where you don't want to be there. Like it's okay to feel that way. And <laughs> that it's like, it's sometimes you're going to have to grind through the day and, but to, it's okay sometimes to be like, Oh, sometimes it's, it's, it's a, sometimes it's a grind. Right. And sometimes you're going to show up to the rink and it's going to be the best day ever. Right. So um, I don't know. I think I think now when you just need to t- teach kids about balance or, or like with their lives too, is it able to be able to work hard and have a good mindset, but also be able to balance out the rest of their life. I think that's the biggest thing that I've learned as an athlete is that I've kind of been able to find both and not just stay in the bubble of, of say, let's just talk, you know? Yeah, I think that that's pretty consistent through a lot of sport, um, especially from what I'm seeing um, here in California geographically and also um in volleyball and basketball and I think high school. I remember when I was in high school, this is, you know, a long time ago when I was in high school, I remember that they were saying, and we're starting to hear the exact opposite now, but you have to specialize. You have to specialize. You can only choose yeah. one. Um, and that sometimes comes from the perspective of um, for the college recruiting process, being able to be um, quote, quote, a master of your craft or somebody who's dedicated, right? Cause that's commitment. Um, yeah. or, or what that's one of the schools of thought is like, oh, that's commitment. If you are only doing one sport and then, <laughs> yeah. you know, and then, so, and then we're seeing, um, statistically we're seeing burnout, we're seeing injury. And I know that there are a lot of factors that play into that, but I also know that one of the big factors that play into that is, um, is doubling down on one sport and overtraining and, Absolutely. and frankly being yeah. under recovered, right? Like there's that, like, well, you can't overtrain. You're just under recovered. Right. Yeah, and and high school, like, like, yeah. yeah, well, they're, they're going to school and, uh, you know, they're going to school for eight to 10 hours a day plus homework. Um, and then they're doing their sport and then they're having to go home. They're commute, like they're probably commuting at least 20 minutes, if not more, if they're on a competitive team, um, if they're at the high school level still, like that's time that they're spending doing that. Yeah. And then, yeah. and then they're expected to do everything that they need to do, um, handle everything that they need to handle, um, get up and then do it again for five straight days. And then they have tournaments on the weekend. What? Yeah. Like, I know. It's like, crazy. Okay. <laughs> I know. That's, that's why I think it's, I know it's, a, it's nice. Like if, if you see, I don't know the, the, the girl, especially female athletes, I think we were the kind of prime example of the ultimate balance act. Like I think, um, you know, I've had to work part time. I've had to run my own hockey school. I had to do all that stuff just to kind of make ends meet, to be able to play the sport that I love. And, um, I think that's something that I think that university teaches a lot of kids. Like, I, I mean, that's what I learned in the university how to time manage and do all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's also, I think, a really good um, mental tool, too. Like we have other things going on, which does help us kind of get away from from our game sometimes. And sometimes I think it's funny, like I, I'd like to be all time every day, like an NHL player in the like, you know, <laughs> in and out of the rink every day, making millions of dollars. But also sometimes it's also kind of nice to have other stuff going on and um, so I, I do enjoy that part of it. So I kind of like it both the best of both worlds for me. And I, I kind of embrace it as, as much as I can. I think that's for sure. I think it's interesting or awesome being able to embrace wherever you are, right. Or, or whenever you are. So like, this is the current, this is, this is currently how, how our lives are set up. Um, uh, and that's probably going to change in another two years or three years, depending Absolutely. on where your career goes. I know for me right now, even in, in, how I'm training my body. Like I'm obviously not uh, <laughs> trying to play internationally or make a national team or even play. Um, I'm really not even like racing or competing right now. I'm more just yeah. focusing on making sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm focusing on me <laughs> and making sure that 
um, you know, I have a lot of injuries. So my primary, my primary driver is making sure that I'm whole, making sure that before, before I go out there and start tearing stuff up or trying to push myself to do things, um, that I, I want to do so bad, uh, you know, <laughs> pushing myself to do these things. I know that I have to do the hard work. I know that I have to do the foundation. I know that I have stuff that I need to, to make up for because, um, I either got injured in some freak injury or I just, I didn't, I didn't lay the right foundation or the right groundwork. Um, and now, you know, I have the opportunity to do that. And now I'm not like, Oh, well, I have to be an endurance athlete and I have to be able to compete and I got to be getting these miles in and I got to be doing these things. Now I'm like, well, I'd really like to just like look good naked, um, and feel really great about myself and that my body is functional. Um, and I know that as an elite athlete, like that's not, you know, yes, it's a benefit to look at naked, uh, but that's but that's <laughs> not that's not the end goal. That's not for, the primary goal. Yeah. yeah, I mean it. It is. It is a nice bonus. It is something that's great. Um, and obviously, your efforts in your in your sport and performing and training um, that's going to show um, positive effects. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think as you get older, that becomes a goal. Like I just want to look good in the summertime. You know, like. You know, maybe an extra run here or there, so I'm a little skinnier for the summer. But um, yeah, I know I agree with that. With that, I think it's all it's all important. I think sometimes you gotta just kind of reset and, and figure it all out. I dig it. Well, you know, I'm really excited to get into your athlete journey, what you're doing now. You know, um, we connected, of course, over Instagram, like everybody does. Uh, connected yeah. over Instagram, and um, I saw this really cool video of you, and you were training with Shea Pierre, who is an expert sports performance training, and you know, he's got all of these really, really cool programs. You know, uh, the platform that he's built, what he's what he's doing over there is really freaking cool, and I, and some of the, sometimes I'll like take little things. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm excited to to talk about what you're training for now and um, what's your big goal going forward. Yeah, so I actually got connected with Shay. So I, uh, when I graduated university, I went right into the, I've been in the national program uh, since I was 16 uh, through like U18's development. Uh, and then when I graduated from Clarkson University, I went right into the senior program and uh, made made a couple world championships and played in a lot of different teams there. And it was on the team for, for about three years. And obviously the end goal, uh, especially for female hockey is obviously to make the Olympic team. So yes. uh, unfortunately, yes, I know, unfortunately, right before the uh, the 2018 Olympics, I got released um, uh, and it was not a part of the selection process. They, so what they do is they centralize every year, much like the U.S. women's team would do as well. They centralize, I think soccer maybe do it as well, where they centralize for the year. Uh, mm -hmm. Ours, we get, we get together in Calgary. Uh, so I wasn't a part of that group, unfortunately. So then I was able to uh, when I, as an athlete, that I mean, it's tough, right? I spent three years on that team. I spent a lot of, put a lot of years of work into that. And then obviously not to make that cut was very tough. And um, I actually, you know, maybe a couple of weeks went by. I said, you know what, I'm just going to reset and, and try to find something new, do change what I'm doing in terms of training. I think mentally I needed a little bit of a change. And uh, I think one of the knocks on my game was, was trying to get faster. And uh, I had connected, I had, met a guy named Courtney Stevens who plays in the CFL he plays for the now he plays for the Calgary St. Peters at the time he played for the Hamilton Ticats and he I said do you have any like speed training the guy someone you work with in terms of that kind of stuff and he goes yeah a guy named Shea Pierre and at the time Shea when I met Shea he had just started uh kind of the Instagram thing and he had been training guys in his basement since he graduated from Windsor so he he just like was a little ball a ball of energy and um, when I met him, I, hon I honestly just, I, I sent him an email. I said, Hey, do you mind if I just come meet you and we could chat? And he's like, no, you know what? Just come in for a workout. And, um, it happened to be with all the CFL guys. So here, oh, here yes! <laughs> with all these big football players and, and I worked out with, with them for, for a day and I absolutely fell in love with it because it not like, it, it's not revolutionary by all means, but it was something different. And, mm -hmm. um, his energy was so contagious and the way they trained and it was all speed and athletic base like I I really put myself as a really good athlete route well-rounded but now that I started that I was with Shay, it, it kind of put it all together in terms of um, my speed athleticism and some I mean I'm just, people who've seen him on Instagram know some of the stuff that he does is, is pretty oh, wild yeah. oh yeah it's it's super, different right yeah it's so cool I love yeah. it 
It was awesome. So, and, and I was able to do a lot of it. Like I was, I'm, I like to consider myself a pretty good athlete. So I was able to do a lot of it. I became, I've never been in better shape uh, than I was. I, within two years, I was, the year that I had without the Olympics, I was with my club team only. And it was probably one of the best years I've had. I'd, uh, my body was in be- the best shape I ever had. And I felt great during the year. So I was uh, lucky enough to train with him during the year as well. Like uh, I had a summer with him with the guys and then I had a full year with just me and him and it really benefited me a big time. And I think mentally it was probably the biggest thing is that I had a kind of a reset for me and change in my routine and a change in what I was doing. And, um, and then from there I was able to kind of get back on the national team after the Olympics, which was, which was a big thing for me. And I think he was a big part of it just because of his energy alone. I think he, he he the guy doesn't drink coffee I don't understand how he doesn't because he just he he's shows up at we used to do workouts at 6 a.m and he was full energy and full full, I just didn't get it but anyway so it was nice to kind of reset with him and have a good couple years under my belt with him that really I honestly think uh what is what I needed the big time in my career and kind of got me back on track in terms of uh feeling more confident I think was the big thing as an athlete I think that's confidence is honestly it's so precious, I think, as an athlete. And I, I sometimes when we when we have it, we we I don't know if take it for granted is the right word, but I know that when I've had my best seasons uh, in college and in and the CWHL is that I didn't even really think about any like I wasn't really thinking the game. I was just kind of playing it. And I think when we were not doing that, it's so hard to find what we were doing to get back to that. And um, I think as you get older, <laughs> it's just so true. It's like, how did, what was I doing? What was I doing before to get to that point? And um, I think as you get older, you figure, you kind of figure out, you just kind of got to hit the reset button sometimes. And whether that be for a blank new st- uh, uh, slate training, or if it's honestly just a, a, a day off and, and resetting the mind that way. So um, that was a big thing, big change in my life too. Also, I think that was a huge, huge thing for me. And uh, I actually owe Shay a lot for that, and he, I'm so happy he's doing so well now because you can see how big he is everywhere. So. Oh, my God, yes. And, you know, I think you said a very key word, and it's like uh, thinking versus doing or being, right? Like, what are we, what are we doing? What are we thinking? Um, and it's hard to get into a flow state. It's hard to uh, really show up as that that highest version of ourselves. It's really hard when we're wrapped up in ourselves, if we're thinking or if we're, we're in the doing, we're not in the being. Yeah. And, and sometimes I think that that's like, that's really where the magic is, is in the being where, you know, when you're in the being, you don't know that you're in the being. Yeah. But when you're, <laughs> but you know, when you're, <laughs> when yeah, you it's hard. Yeah, I get thinking, it. Yeah. It's because you're thinking. Um, Absolutely, and yeah. it's like that, um, just kind of like with, like to me- like meditation, right? So it's like you get to that that bliss state, um, and you don't know that you're in that bliss state until you're not in the bliss state anymore. <laughs> it's weird, <laughs> which, yeah, absolutely which is magical, and it also super sucks uh, because you know that present moment awareness, or you know that flow state, that just flowing and being, like that's that's where all the magic is, and that's that's the place that, that we're always like as athletes or, you know, as high performers or as people who just want to show up and, and, and be in the world. Um, you know, that's where the magic is and, and we get in our own way a lot. Um, or we allow, we, or we allow other things to get into our headspace. Um, and the, you know, as we mature as athletes, like learning how to kind of like, not necessarily block out, but stay true to the, to the, to the being. Yeah. yeah. I think, and <laughs> to, to that, right? Like yeah. that's hard. Like that's, and that's, and that's what makes it so exciting because it is this elusive flow state that we're always like chasing and trying to get to. Yeah. I think the big thing for me was I was kind of my own obstacle. Um, like I know when I first got on the national team, my first tournament was the best I've ever had. Like I had just come off a national championship at, at Clarkson and <laughs> Uh, my best yeah not too bad yeah I'll take it that's uh it's funny because Clarkson now women's hockey is like they've won like three of the last six and and we had won the first one ever in my senior year and um yeah so I think it's kind of neat to kind of see the program evolve but um like I said like 
I think when you come off something like that and you go into something like, like the net, like the senior national team and you make it for the first time, it's like, it's been your dream your whole life. Right. And uh, you're playing alongside girls that you looked up to. And, oh, and at that, yeah. I know at that first tournament, I didn't think I was, you know, I had a great time and I just kind of was enjoying it and I had no idea what to expect. So I literally just put my head down and played and it was one of the best. And then, uh, from then on, I kind of had high, I think maybe, maybe I did have high expectations for myself and I got in my own head and, um, there were, were times where I, you know, got, I wasn't playing my best and didn't play a ton <laughs> because of it. And, uh, it takes a lot to get back there. And I think that's the biggest thing is it doesn't matter what level you play, whether it's national team or club team or whatever, or even just for fun. I think just knowing that you belong there and enjoying it. And there's a reason why you are there. That's for sure. Oh my gosh. So. I love that. And I think it's it's those moments of when you don't have, when you're not as confident or in those moments of, God, I got to do something different. Oh my gosh, I got to figure this out. It's in those moments that we truly appreciate uh, either the experience that we had or the experience that we are moving towards or trying to create. And I think that it's, it's within that, like, um, I, I guess it's like the oscillation between the two uh, that makes it so worthwhile. Yeah, absolutely. And addicting and addicting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. And I think um, like some, some like a period right now where I'm in the summer, like I, I had a good end to the season and now you kind of get to like find your rhythm again and kind of build up to another, uh, another year and kind of find your strides in the summer and summertime is one of my favorite times because I get to walk out and flip flops after the rink. So that's, oh, that's a good time. Oh yeah. So <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So for that, since you're in this like this different period, is there is there something that you're you're really like adding in that you're like, you know what? I need to do something brand new or, you know, what's the, what's the brand new thing or, you know, how are you bringing novelty to your summer training? Yeah, actually, um, something new I did this year was boxing. I, me and my girlfriend decided that we'll do it no once way. a week. No way! Yeah, so we, we do boxing once a week, and it was something different for me. Like I, I've actually seen a lot of the NHL, like on Instagram, a lot of the guy NHL guys I see do it, and I thought maybe it was just for the fighting guys. Like, I mean, I'm not yeah. going to get in a fight anytime soon, I hope, but um, it was just like something different, and I found a really cool gym here in Toronto, uh, West End Athletic, that... Um, if anyone it listens to it in Toronto, it's quite the gym. It's pretty cool. It's brand new, really cool place. And a guy that we met there named Tommy, who just runs us through an hour of, of boxing. And it's something new to me, right? Like, I mean, it's like anything when you play a sport your whole life, it's like muscle memory, right? So if I'm stick handling or shooting or anything like that, it's all about muscle memory. But now with the boxing, I kind of learn new things. And, you know, when we're on the pads, let's say, and he's calling the different punches and that kind of stuff. I got to think 10 times harder than I would if I was you know playing playing hockey so um it's something different and it's also like a different kind of you know challenge for me and I love being able to kind of push myself I'm very competitive like probably the most competitive person on the planet uh so it's it's even when I'm playing something little or or trying to learn something new like boxing it's 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 a fun challenge for me on 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 one day a week I've definitely added to my training that keeps it fresh and Sometimes, like I said earlier, you don't want to get in the same groove over and over again. And that's, that's something that I've added. Oh my gosh. That sounds fun. (laughs) It is fun. Yeah. It's a ton of fun. I've always, uh, it's, it's something that, uh, there's a gym that I used to coach at and they would always used to be doing, um, like either hitting the bag or there was a coach doing the, like the, I don't even know what it's called. Is is it called spar? I don't, you know, the the one I'm talking about. Yeah. The pads and they're like, pow, 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 pow. And they're doing different, uh, different movement patterns or like different, um, configurations. I don't know. What do they call it? <laughs> yeah. he, well, he calls, he, he like, so our guy, he, I, I assume they do it all the same, but they hold the pads up and he, he'll call different punches. Right. So you have like your jab and your cross and your, um, all the other ones, but they're all numbered. Right. So you have to go one, one through 10. I think I've learned so far. I don't know if they're anymore, but one through 10 and then he'll call like one, one, two. So you have to like do your, your punches. Oh, and that yeah, so that that's what's tough about it is that I need to think like, okay, what is my one? What's my two? You know, what's that kind of stuff? And I'm I'm learning that you, you kind of got to be get, get into your new kind of habits, right? Like, you know, any sport you you get into a habit of, let's say, like I don't know, skating or 
or gliding or whatever. And I, you know, I got to work on keep my hands up and that kind of stuff. That's, that's different. So it's a new challenge. It's fun. Oh my gosh. That's super fun. I'm excited to hear how that translates to your next season, right? Because, because the, those, uh, those movement patterns, those, uh, the ability for your neurons to fire faster because you're building that whole new, like myelin system of, of all of these different movement patterns and, and just, Oh my God, that's going to be cool. I'm re- I'm excited yeah, to see sense. how that, how that translates. So we'll have, we'll have to do another episode that that's all on how boxing changed uh, your hockey Absolutely. game. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. How it helps my slap shot. How about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll work. Ah, well, okay. so since we know what you're currently up to, um, I'm really excited to rewind and, uh, get kind of like the big picture of your athlete journey. Uh, you know, when I was doing research about you and checking you out, you know, you have this history of winning, like all you do is win, 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 no matter what. Um, so I'm excited to hear <laughs> a little bit about that. And, and also you, <laughs> how you feel about winning since you're so competitive. Uh, uh, I do like to win. That's for sure. In anything. Um, I mean, I think I've been pretty fortunate um, to play on some good teams. Um, I've also kind of learned, um, playing a team sport and how, how a team should function to win a championship. You know what I mean? Like, I think I look back on the teams that I have been on that, that have won and you, you think about, um, kind of what made them work and, and, and you kind of get that feeling, um, in the dressing room or around the girls that, you know, it's going to be successful. And, um, the big thing that I learned, especially when at a younger age and we won, we won in junior was we just honestly just got along and had a lot of fun together and it wasn't too serious all the time. And I think when you're younger, that helps a lot. I think sometimes when it's too serious, it's, um, it's not the best, but, um, and the big thing I think in, in at Clarkson and the cool thing about my Clarkson story is that when I was a freshman, um, we came in, there's eight of us, which is a huge class. Um, yeah. Uh, for hockey especially and we were all kind of touted as very high prospects like we were you know and collection is a young pretty young program still to this day so when we came in it was you know high expectations they had just made the NCAA tournament for the first time and um, I remember we came in and we had actually set a record for the most losses in school history so (laughs) yeah so that's (laughs) the one record we have that I don't think we're too proud of but I honestly don't think if we would have had a year like that, I don't think we would have won uh, the senior I mean, in my senior year. And I think from then on, we kind of made a vow, us eight, um, that we weren't going to ha- ever have that feeling again. And I know that personally, I never wanted to because I'm so competitive that I was like, oh, man, you know, when you first get there, you're just so excited and things like this start happening. You're like, what am I doing here? What You know, start second guessing yourself. But mm-hmm. Um, at the end of the year, we kind of bound it together and was like, you know what, we don't ever want to feel this again. And we kind of started building from there. And um, I was fortunate to have some really great coaches there that built a culture of, of work ethic and dedication and also having each other's backs. I think that was the big part of it. Um, and by the time we got to our senior year, um, it was that was just the culture that we had built. And as seniors, everyone looks up to you. And we had we, had, we were that was in our in our veins like we just we didn't know how to do anything else at that point and I think well, that's cultivated great. that for four years right like that had been Absolutely. something you were steeped in it and and that you guys had made that commitment together so it's like you're either gonna get on or you're gonna get off you don't belong here Absolutely. and I think that when you have that type of a culture um and especially with the upperclassmen when you have that type of a culture um you can't help but recruit or bring in greatness because guess what like the uh the people who aren't on board they're either going to not last long or they're not going to be attracted to the the team and the environment that you guys have created yeah absolutely and that's that was the big thing that we wanted to create there is 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 that kind of culture of you you don't have to get along all the time off the ice that wasn't the big thing is that no matter what when you get into that dress room you knew that's when you had each other's backs you know and um and I think that was the big thing that I learned. Uh, and that's, I really believe that it's funny because I, I've played with a girl named Erica Howe um, for 12 years now in a row. We've been teammates for, she's a goalie. And we've kind of, it's funny, now we go to different teams where we play on different, and we want to compare that culture. And it's hard to, because sometimes when you, some, not every year is going to be like that, unfortunately, as much as we want it to be. But I think kind of we reset every year and say, okay, this is what we kind of want to set. And uh, we try to kind of keep that even he, she retrain her together every day. And we, we try to keep that culture every day when we're doing it, or even if we're just hanging out. And um, so that's the big thing. And that, that happened again, when I played in, in, in Markham and we won the Clarkson cup, that was a big one as well is that we just kind of had each other's backs and, 
had fun with it. That was the big thing. We had no business uh, at the beginning of the year. No one had us ever winning, even close to winning that trophy. And I think that was kind of how good of- did that feel? How good oh, did that so feel to know that you guys just came out of nowhere and you're like, yes. Yeah, no one thought at all we were going to win. And uh, we beat a team in the first round, Montreal, who we had never beaten before, twice in a row. Like, so we play best of three series and we beat them twice in a row in Montreal. And anyone Whew. that. Uh, Anyone that knows hockey and knows Montreal, whether it be the Canadians or, or the women's team, the Canadians, they, it's it's not easy to play there. So it was nice. It, that was probably one of the biggest things, biggest wins of that I've played, uh, have done in, in the CWHL. And I think that all kind of the winning mentality, it's not necessarily has to be, I don't know, bestowed on everyone. I think it's a big thing in culture. I think that's big thing that if one if I went get into coaching and that kind of stuff is, is is what kind of culture are you setting for the for the teams you see the best teams even in professional sports I'm sure their culture is exactly the same so how interesting so when you were I want to talk about the change between collegiate play and making that change to pro athlete what was that transition like and what were the challenges surrounding that like what did that look like for you it was hard. I think you come out of college, any college athlete can tell you, it's all laid out for you, right? Like you get there, you're on the ice for, for it. You're practicing four times a week. You're playing two times a week. You know that, you know exactly when you have to be there, there you know, when your meals are, you know, when everything is. And um, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's the way it is, but you also have to time manage with, with school and stuff, which teaches you a lot, but that transition to professional hockey, I mean, um, especially for us and female, like I think any female sport, you have to kind of, figure it out on your own there's not like um that real like that schedule that's going to keep you accountable you got to kind of figure out how to hold yourself accountable and that was the biggest thing for me that I had to learn is that okay what do I what should I be doing throughout the year to make sure I can play my best and um because it was laid out for me in college and now it's not so how do I kind of find what works and um it was, it was hard. Like it's taken, I honestly think it took me three or four years to figure it out and really figure it out for real. And now I kind of feel comfortable in my own, my own routine and my own skin to, you know, find the right balance. But it, it's any, any kind of jump like that is not easy. And I'm sure we'll get to a point in, in women's hockey where it is going to be very, very scheduled and very laid out and, and we're making a living like that. But um, that transition is hard because you got to focus on so many different things too, and you got to find a part-time job and make it financially sustainable to to live. So too, so it's it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot, but it was it was good. It, it taught me a lot as as a human being. I think too. I think you hit on something really, really cool, or not even cool. It's just something that needs to be talked about. Is that living wage for professional <laughs> athletes, especially for females? I've got <clears throat> several friends. I've got several people who have been on the podcast and and many others, I'm sure, where, you know, they're competing at the highest level. They're on a national team. They should have every resource. They should have everything laid out for them, a schedule, coaches, uh, you know, X, Y, and Z, all of the things, right? Um, But they don't. Yeah. They don't even make a living wage. Like you you have to, and I know several of them work a part-time job. They have to be, uh, a lot of them either have to coach or coach because like that, that's just what makes sense. Um, you know, some of them have to teach classes, uh, just to be able to pay for food that they're not paying for or their parents (laughs) supplement stuff. Like there's so many different stories like that, that it's, especially in female athletes in a lot of different professional, uh, organizations that they're, aren't the resources that y'all deserve yeah and you're having having to make stuff work how are you doing that how does that work from your perspective yeah I mean uh, it's hard because I think I'm the type of person that I've kind of taken with a grain of salt and kind of just taken the resources what I'm given and I think um, different people will give you different perspectives perspectives on it but I've kind of been able to build my own kind of resources and figure out what works for me and um, kind of grab resources from everywhere and I'm fortunate enough being a national team athlete that I have a little bit more funding in terms of you know so I can kind of have a little bit more time to kind of train and focus on that kind of stuff I still do have to work part-time as well but um, I think the biggest girls you want to look at especially in women's hockey is the girls that aren't on the national team they got to work most girls work full-time nine to five and we practice at nine thirty at night and uh, for that for like it's pretty insane to me and 
I don't know. I think honestly, and I think, I don't know if you've heard about our league and the CWHL that it folded and we're looking for it. Come, I did come not. Together. Yeah, so we were, <laughs> I did not. That's okay. So we, we so we let this in, uh, in May, our league folded, um, unfortunately, um, just for, because of funding, it didn't make any sense for us to keep running the league. We weren't making, um, enough funding. And, um, so they decided to fold the league and, uh, as players, um, we've bounded together uh, to over 200 of us to try to figure out what is the next step and what is, how do we get these resources? And <clears throat> there is another league, uh, the NWHL, that will try to, to run a league and, and play a professional women's hockey that is based out of the United States. But um, we've come together as, a, as a, and we don't want to take any of that from anybody, right? We, we want to make sure that they, they try their best. And But as players, as the players that did come out of the CWHL and some girls from the NWHL were trying to come together and kind of figure out what the next steps are. And we're not asking for millions of dollars or anything like that. We know that's not viable. It's not, you know, the, the funding's not there for that much. But we just want to try to get the people on board and some better resources, like you said, to kind of, help us help our sport go forward right it's like anything like um i know the women's soccer team did the same thing in the u.s like trying they took a stand and uh, really wanted to push for that and 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 we're we're doing the same thing right now and i think it's so important to make sure we do it the right way and not rush it and mm, i'm okay yeah. it, i'm okay if we don't have to if we don't have a real league for a year and we got to figure it out and, and and pull it together and 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 figure it out for even the next generation like i'm in my prime right now and for me to miss a year is, is tough but it's in the long run, it'll be worth it, I think. Wow. I think that that's the kind of foresight that, that we need from mm -hmm. players, right? And being able to say, no, we're not going to play. No, this doesn't make sense. We need to figure out how to come together. We need to figure out how to make this financially viable. We need a different system. We need something that's going to push the sport forward, that's going to support our athletes yeah. And, and that's going to ultimately uh, deliver an end product to the masses that's in the best interest of, of everybody. And, yeah. and that's a hard thing. Um, you know, obviously, we're, we're seeing a lot of that in, with the, the U.S. soccer team, the women's mm -hmm. national team. We're seeing a lot, you know, we're seeing big, big, big pushes. I'm not sure if you're seeing a lot of it. It's, Absolutely. Yeah. It's pretty big. And I'm sure you guys are taking notes, too, like, oh, all right. So, yeah, and so, that's, that's, so Chabani yeah. and Luna gotta hit those girls. Gotta hit that company up. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're like, like yogurt. I know, right? <laughs> uh, I um I saw one of the the posts on your Instagram, and it was like the the for the game thing, and just the and I'll I'll link to it for for people in the show notes, but um, I have it right here. There was a couple of quotes in there that I thought were super powerful. Um, and, and just things to kind of note, and it's, you know, having no health insurance and making it as low as $2,000 a season means players can't adequately train and prepare to play at the highest level because of that together as players, we will not play in any professional leagues in North America this season until we get the resources that professional hockey demands and deserves. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, though, that was something that was super powerful. Um, and then down at the bottom I'm talking about this is the moment we've been waiting for our moment to come together and say we deserve more it's time for a long-term viable professional league that will showcase the greatest product of women's professional hockey in the world um and I think that those are beautiful words uh and a beautiful statement to make and especially being united with all the players um and being able to come together and and try to figure out a solution that's going to to work for everyone because y'all take a lot of hits and y'all trade up. <laughs> we do, I know. Unfortunately, you have, you're gonna have uh, you're gonna have whiplash. I mean, you have you've had whiplash for your entire life, and guess what? You're gonna Honestly, continue yeah. to have whiplash, right? Uh, like, <laughs> and not not to mention like. Uh, the brain and concussion implications that go along with that. Um, and those things are overlooked. And when you, you know, this isn't, you know, playing a professional sport, like, yes, it's all fun and games and it's entertainment. Uh, but to be able to, to compete at that level and play at that level, you have to be training and you have to be able to support yourself and, and you have to be yeah. able, 
No, and and not even financially, although that is a huge driver. That's very important. But just physically, like being able to pay for workouts. I know some of the athletes that I work with, like they they have to get sponsors to pay for their training. They have to get uh, parents to fund their stuff. Um, and it's a sacrifice that they make to be able to play in their prime. It's a sacrifice. Yeah. Um, do you find that amongst those those 200 plus that everybody's making similar sacrifices. Absolutely. Like, I think the big ones you got to look at is, I mean, I'm fortunate enough that, you know, I live in a, a big city like Toronto where, where there will be, there's a lot of, there's a lot of players here. We had two teams here in that league. And uh, I'm fortunate enough that say for the next year, if we were to, to train together, we, we have a good group of girls. And, and if we were, if there was a league very shortly and, um, which there probably will be a team in Toronto. So my life is, I'm very fortunate in terms of being in the right area, but yeah. I think the big girls you got to look at are in that group are the girls that maybe that live in, in areas that maybe won't, that won't happen. I think that's the scary part about it all is that um, say the girls maybe in Connecticut or I don't know, and in, in maybe even in Calgary out West, it's, you know, it's, it's tough, right? Cause the girls who knows, like they were set, they had a team to play on. They had their life, they had families, they had oh, jobs. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Whew. And I know it's tough. Right. And those are the girls that I think are sacrificing the most that, that maybe not, maybe won't even play in this new league if we do get it started. And, um, I think that's the, the biggest thing that I feel the most. And, um, I'm fortunate enough to be in a good area and, and, and play, uh, play at a high level. But I think the biggest thing is, is we got to be able to kind of figure out a common ground. And I think those girls that are doing it, I, I give them a lot of props because um, I think down the road, let's say in 10 years, if we do have a league, that's pretty amazing. They'll be able to be like, Hey, I was a part of that. And um, it's, it's pretty powerful. I mean, you think about it, we're a lot of, a lot of the girls that I play against and with are pretty smart people. And, um, pretty amazing humans. So it's pretty cool to see us all come together and 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 watch it all all come together. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I really think it's going to be a good thing in in the end. And like you said, yeah. the product will will benefit. And that's the big thing that people will will see. I think that's really cool. So for you, moving forward, you know, I know that you're coaching. You know, you say your part time job. How well, <laughs> you know, is, is it just coaching? What what else are you involved in right now? Um, oh, that's the big thing. I kind of have my own hockey school where I, I do a lot of team development during the year. So I'll have mm -hmm. uh, five or six teams during the year where I'll come once a week, let's say, and, oh, wow. and run skills and, and, and hang out with the girls. And I like to kind of see it as mentorship as well. Like I think a lot of, I do a lot of boys teams as well, but I think a lot of female teams want to see female role models. And I think that's, oh, yeah. Really cool. yeah. Right. So I think that's a really cool thing about it is, is, is that part. And, um, right now, honestly, that's kind of what I'm training in the summertime. I really like to kind of take, take it easy and enjoy my, my training. I really do like my summer training. I really love it. So I'm fortunate to be one of those people that loves to go to the gym, to the gym in the morning. And, um, I have a cottage that I love to hang out in the summer too. So I try to find a good balance because once the, like, like when the season like gets going, it's, it's tough to find that, that, that time. So, um, right now I'm not, I'm trying to take it as easy as I can, especially in early June. That's for sure. Oh my gosh, that's such a blessing that that you're able to have that time and, and that you've cultivated the wisdom to know that you need the balance. And it's yeah. something that I wish I would have had more of. And, and it's still something I, <laughs> I'm always like working towards. And it's, you know, when I talk about balance, it's like there's there's never like true balance because there there's, you know, life is so dynamic and things are always moving and shaking. Um, yeah. But to be able to find um, whether it's an hour of balance, whether that's a day of balance, whether that's, you know, a week at a cottage, like yeah. <clears throat> whatever it is um, that is as balanced as you're going to get in these moments and, and really being able to uh, not only take advantage of them, but really enjoy them. Like, yeah. re like really enjoy them. Yeah, I agree. That's the biggest thing that I've learned over my 26 years of, of being alive is that balance is honestly the biggest thing, whether it be in the sport or um, in life or in any, any relationship that you have. I think it's very important and um, something that has driven me to, to kind of become who I am and something that I want to share with people as much as I can because I don't think people realize how important it is.
That's pretty cool. When you know, when you feel, you know, that imbalance feeling when you're like, oh no, yeah. no. What's your, uh, what's the go-to thing for you that you're like, okay, I need a reset. What's your, uh, what's the thing that, that, that ticks the alarm that tells you like, whoop, 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 it's time for me. Um, I think when I'm not have like, when I'm not having fun with things, like I'm a big, like I'm the type of person that like, I always, I'm always kind of having fun in anything I do, like around, especially in, like when I train too, I train with a group. So, um, if I'm not smiling in it, I'm not having a good time. Then I know that I kind of need to step, maybe whether it's take a step back or kind of be like, Hey, I need to go do something for me today and kind of get rebalanced mm -hmm. and, um, and I think that's the big thing is that if I'm not smiling while I'm doing everything, I'm probably in a not, not so balanced place. So that's, that's the big one for me. I, I've always been a light, light hearted person. And I think, uh, when, sometimes when I'm overthinking everything and, and I'm not smiling and doing things like that, that's, I know when I know I need to do something different. So. Oh, that's interesting. Are you, when you're coaching these, these youth athletes, um, you know, on the topic of, of balance and you know are you seeing a lot of the need to um appease and please and um serve these external sources whether that's parents or sport or whatever else is that something that you're seeing consistently yeah <laughs> and then being yeah. out of balance <laughs> yes I think I think the big thing um now are the parents I think it's important. I mean, I was fortunate enough that my parents honestly were just like, kind of let me run and do my thing. They were so supportive. And, um, like we, we'd have chats about the game, no problem, but it was never, it was never my, my parents against me. It was always a conversation. And I think sometimes you find a now that there's not a lot of that. There's always just a lot of finger pointing and, and, I find a lot of kids that I coach are looking in out in the stands or in the glass before they even right after a play on the ice or something like that, which oh, is, should never worst. be a thing. Right. And that's I think, worst. I know it's terrible. And I don't know what the solution is to, to a lot of that. I mean, it's, but, um, unfortunately that's just the reality of it. Not, that's not, not a very like super common, but I've seen it, seen it in the past and it's, unfortunately it's not something fun that you want to see, um, as a coach, that's for sure. Oh yeah. I can, I can relate. I had a girl, um, and I think, I think it also comes down to, uh, their age too. Um, so I had a girl similar, she was 13 and after every play she's looking to her dad and I was like, I swear to God, you look at your dad one more time. Yes. Yeah, so and I, I, I had to go talk to him too. And I was like, listen, this can't happen. I'm over it. It's her sport. Let her play. Yeah. It's not a you and her thing. Yes. Yes. You can share a love of this. That's fine. I'm completely, yeah. yes, support her, but you and her are not playing a game. Yeah, She's playing hers. six yeah. other people. This is hers. Yeah. This is hers. Um, I read this and I can't remember the source because, you know, I'm always <laughs> inundated with information. Um, so I can't <laughs> always remember the source, but I think it was on a podcast or something. They were talking about child development and how around 13 or 14, like there's like this built in biological mechanism that makes uh, kids give the middle finger to their parents. Um not not actual middle finger, but like the biological yeah. middle finger where that's a time and and um a person or a human's life where they have to uh they have to break that tie because they yeah. they have to separate themselves from not necessarily the love of their parents uh but they have to they have to start to cultivate their sense of self outside of their family and um that that's that's one of the reasons why like that age group is just so crappy it like, it's, it's just tough. so bad yeah. it's just so bad yeah. um and, and not that it's just like oh they're bad kids or oh it's you know all these things but it's actually like it's genetically built into us to to be like no no i don't yeah. want to no we're not doing yeah. this um <laughs> so i think that, that that's also a really interesting uh point of like balance right so it's like these teenagers are caught in the in-between of like trying to become their own person but yet they still have and if they have a, a clingy parent who's like I need you to love me or I need you to have attention or I need you to please yeah. me um it's like part of the maturation process um on like the human maturation process on top of the athlete 
maturation process, right? So it's yeah, like no, it's- all of these things like looped on top of each other. Um, and then we're like, and then go out and perform. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Which doesn't make it very, very fun as a teenager. That's for sure. There's so much else going on. So that's funny that you say that because I think, like I said earlier, it t- took me till I was 20, 26 to really make it all work. So um, I think the big thing when you're teaching young kids like that is just kind of being patient, but also reminding them that there is, you know, some things that you do need to kind of either ignore or not. And I finding that balance is very key. And I think, yeah, they're not going to figure it out right away. That's for sure. I didn't figure it out till I was 26. So Got here I am. So I don't even know if I still have, so who knows? Well, for now, right? Like for right now we have. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Guess what? Well, it changes in two years. <laughs> for you. When, I hit, when I hit 30, who knows what happened? Oh, let me tell you stuff happened. <laughs> let me tell you between 28 and 30, there's like this, uh, there, there's a thing that's going to happen. There's going to be a life event for you. There's going to be something and it might have to do with sports, might have to do with the life. There's going to be a life event and stuff's going to throw you yeah. and it's going to be hard and something's going to be really hard, but you're going to get through it. And then you're going to be, you know, it's almost like birthing into your, your like adult, your full adult self being able to like (laughs) leave the patterns of childhood and 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 all of that behind and really like be thrust into this um you know adulting seems so like such a crappy word to but you know you're like thrust into uh like this this more whole uh more self-aware version of yourself but i'ma tell you (laughs) It's a rough, whatever's going to have is going to be rough. I know for me, yeah. rough, uh, uh, had a couple of rough ones. <laughs> yeah, that's all right, though. Here we are. Like, oh, you're on, like, the other side, and you're, like, looking back, and you're, like, oh, God, thank, thank God. I wonder why that, that happened, honestly. It's, everything happens for a reason. I am a true believer in that, so. When we connect, connect the dots in hindsight, right? Like, we're, like, going through, like, the struggle, and and it's hard. Yeah. And then, and then we get on the other side of it, just like you with your confidence. Right. So it's like, you're yeah. going through the struggle of, of, oh my gosh, I, you know, I, I had something and now it's not here anymore. And now I need to do something different. And then getting on the other side of that and looking back and being like, oh man, I did some hard work, man. I was in a place I didn't like very much. Oh man, this place is so much better. Um, yeah. And in however many years or whether that's six months from now or even longer, you're going to look back at this and, and be like, Oh man, I was in this. Now, you know, now you're in this different life event or whatever. It's amazing. Yeah, it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling. <laughs> well, the only thing that we can be sure of is change and that things are going to continue to be dynamic um, as athletes, as people. Um, and it sounds like you've got a lot of really cool things coming up. Um, so obviously, you're not, you're training right now. You're not. The, there is no foreseeable league right now, right? Not, no, not necessarily. So it's, it's a tough place to be in mentally, but I think uh, there will be something hopefully. And I, and I fortunately have something like with the national team I am training for. So it's kind of keeping that in mind. So Ooh, it's, hard, it's hard though. Yeah. When's, uh, when do you, when's that next big thing? Uh, like what, so- like when do you find out if you can, if you can, make the team again I know that each each country and each team has kind of a different process for that um what what and when so we that? have uh camps in September uh, we just have okay. a camp fitness testing camp uh, in May so they kind of test us at the beginning of the summer and then we'll have a camp in September where we'll we'll test again and then also have on ice where they'll um that's kind of our first camp of this of the season and uh we'll be there usually it depends on where it is but usually it's like a week long and we we play games and practices and they evaluate you you're always being evaluated it seems like but um and then um we'll have an event uh in november called the four nations cup where we play um and they'll pick (gasps) yeah they'll pick a team from from the pool that pool of players and then um from then on like last year we had the rivalry series where we played three games against the u.s hopefully that is another thing this next year and then the world championship which happens in april so that's kind of our cycle during the off like non-olympic years um and each team is new so they'll they kind of keep evaluating you as the year goes on whether yeah always usually starts in september camp that's kind of 
where you set your base for the year and um and so then we'll kind of move on from there and you just keep playing hard and hopefully they pick you at each each event and um um fortunately and as an as a player you just kind of just kind of put your head down and do the work and uh, a lot of that stuff is out of your control so uh, I've learned that as an older athlete that try not to worry about a lot of things and just kind of put your head down and do what don't focus on anything else but just about what you're doing and uh things usually work out hopefully for the best so Oh, that's a, <laughs> that is a huge nugget of wisdom that I hope people are either <laughs> taking notes in their phone or that they're making the mental note or that they're really, that they're really like putting that gold nugget in their pocket. Cause <laughs> it's easy. It's really easy to get distracted by, um, evaluators. It's really easy to get distracted by, Oh, I really got to make this team and I've got to have this external thing. And, and my whole life is, 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 is getting all these things into place. And, and yeah obviously for, for you, it's, it's sport. And for, for others, it could be job or family or, you know, where geographic region, wherever they're living, like all of these things, like we have these expectations and these hopes. Uh, but the only, like this, the only real control that we have is like our, our, how we prepare and our mental attitude and then how we react to whatever's going on. (laughs) So, so it's like this false, sense of control so it's like no I'm just gonna go out there and I'm gonna have fun and I'm gonna I'm gonna play the game that I've been playing and all the boxing that I've been doing is really helping me (laughs) (laughs) I'll be throwing throwing right hooks and and stuff on the ice now after after the summer (laughs) oh my gosh I'm I really am excited to hear how your summer of balance how the different training, how that all uh, sets you up for success. Cause I know that you have the right mindset going forward. And I think that all of the, the wisdom and the gold nuggets that you've picked up throughout your, uh, throughout your athlete journey, I think that that's really going to serve you um, and put you in a really good position for whatever's next, right? Like you have hopes, you have dreams, you know, I have hopes and dreams for you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we have no idea what that looks like. So it's exciting to see that what whatever whatever is uh, coming up here in the future. It's exciting to be able to like look back in hindsight and be like, oh yeah, the dots. Yeah, yeah that's that's exactly why we did it, and that's why why we're getting to the end goal. So I think that's something that I'll look forward to, especially I mean this summer, but every every summer as we go on and every year. And um, I I I enjoy that part of it, and I've learned as I get older to enjoy it more uh, as it goes on not uh, not look too far ahead that's for sure I like it I like it well you know the last question that I love asking my my guest is around this powerful word of the year because every year I'm going to choose like a different kind of theme um, and it's unst- you know this year is unstoppable so for you what does unstoppable mean and how are you really living into that today that's a good question. Um, I think unstoppable. I would it would be different for everyone. I think, but for me, it'd be just making sure that I'm in the right mindset to everything that I'm doing. I don't know if that really makes sense, but for me, like as as long as I'm in, but being able to go each day, whether it be training or even on an off day, doing just fun things with my friends, and I'm doing it in the like I'm doing it to my full potential, and I'm not my head's not somewhere else. I think that's when I'm in the right place and. Um, when you do that, I think whether it be in a sport or in life, I think that it's very, um, it, it's going to be helpful to you because sometimes we get caught thinking about other things or, or we're not currently in the moment of what we're doing. And I think that's the big thing that I've learned is that um, if we do that, I think that we'll definitely be unstoppable in whatever we're doing because we're, we're a lot more focused and, and um, confident that way. I dig it. As awesome. we bring this prod podcast to a close, where can people connect with you? Where do you want me to point people to? Um, you can connect with me on on Instagram, obviously, um, rat26, R-A-T-T-2-6. Um, also, I have my hockey school website, uh, JLR Hockey School. Um, you guys can check that out. Um, also on Twitter and, and all those kind of platforms, too, with the same handle. So um, you can connect with me anyway like that. I always enjoy chatting with different people like, like yourself today. So um, you can chat hit me up and uh we can chat or or anything like that so i'm looking forward to to, to seeing what, what comes up from this wonderful thank you so much for being here and you know i really hope that you the listeners enjoy jamie's journey and that you'll continue to come back to this podcast to become inspired by the stories and empowered by the strategies shared so you can level up 
unlock your true potential, and really enjoy your own journey. I'm so grateful for your attention, and I hope that you got something special out of this episode. Make sure you follow Jamie on Instagram, and I'll link to everything in show notes. You know, Please subscribe and leave us a five-star review, and don't forget to tell your teammates and friends about this podcast. If you want to see us interact, you can watch this episode on YouTube, and if you want more awesome content, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all of the different places. And you can always join us on the journey online at www.bethewinningelement.com. Until next time, train with purpose, play with passion, and seize the day every day.